If there's one topic that will absolutely divide NASCAR fans, it's the debate of whether Old Bristol or New Bristol is better. And keep in mind, New Bristol's been around since the fall of 2007, so it's not exactly new anymore. The people that were born then are able to drive by now, but we're still going to continue this debate because every time NASCAR heads to Bristol, you have a bunch of old fans romanticizing about Old Bristol, saying that they need to tear down what Bristol is now and turn it back into what it was. And to that, I say, you're 100% wrong. But I'm not here to dissuade you from whatever your thoughts are on that, but we should talk about it at least. Now, NASCAR fans, they're guilty of romanticizing a lot of things. Racing was much better back in the day, you know, when people won by three laps or there was one car on the lead lap. They love to say that old Bristol was better than new Bristol, and it wasn't. What's wrong with Bristol now isn't the track, it's the car. But old Bristol has everybody wrapped around their finger thinking that it was this spectacular event. And granted, it was very good. And people that hate New Bristol love to point out that they didn't even sell out the night race at Bristol anymore. And it's almost like Bristol Motor Speedway and its abundance of grandstands, 150,000, were built to please a time where NASCAR's popularity was absolutely booming, which has proven to be an anomaly in terms of NASCAR fandom and how popular the sport actually is. And because of that, now you only see a 60 to 70% full Bristol Motor Speedway, which is still more than literally every other track on the schedule outside of maybe the Daytona 500, which continually sells out 100,000 grandstand seats. But still, even a 50% crowd at Bristol is 75,000 people, and that's still more than 90% of the racetracks out there right now. But we're not going to let the visuals stand in our way at the moment. We're just talking about the racing. And now, like I said, NASCAR fans love to romanticize old Bristol because they get a few key moments stuck in their head and then they think that made the racing good. When in reality, racing at old Bristol was single file on the bottom, a conveyor belt um, of just people following in a line. It was a parade and every now and then you'd get a bump and run and somebody would go up and then they'd get shuffled to the back. And granted, there were there exciting finishes Absolutely. You had Dale versus Terry rattling his cage, right? Yeah, everybody remembers that. You had Gordon versus Rusty in 2002. But outside of that, the racing from the green flag to the checker flag was never really that spectacular. Meanwhile, New Bristol, even though it was completed in 2007, we're still calling it new, it provides racing top to bottom, green flag to checker flag, nearly every race. There's great racing throughout. And everybody says, oh, well, the multiple lines make it so frustrating because you just, the only way you can get around a guy is you have to burn your right front off on the bottom. You don't have to do that. There are plenty of ways to make passes at the new Bristol using the multi lanes. Obviously, in 2007, Bristol Motor Speedway ran it on the old track in the spring of 2007, and then they completely repaved the track and regraded the banking to go to progressive banking. 24 degrees on the bottom, 30 degrees on the top. The middle is somewhere in that 27 range, right? So you have three distinct groups that you can that you can run on. And we've seen guys go in, they slide job, they dime in the corner, they, they come off easier like that. You see guys enter on the top, turn down in the center of the corner, trying to get that drive off. You see guys just roll in the top. Daniel Hemrick did that on Friday night in the Xfinity race, and Justin Allgaier had to work his butt off to try to pass him. And I think that's fine. You can still do a bump and run, right? Like if the guy's running the wall, you can go in behind him get up into him, kind of slide him up into the wall a little bit, dive underneath him and drive off. Same thing on the bottom. You Like we saw in the truck race and the Arca race where it was a bottom feeding race because of how powerful that PJ1 was, you can still go in there and bump and run somebody if you need to or you just have your teammate get in the way, uh, whatever is your prerogative. Either way, New Bristol provides a lot more options for drivers than what old Bristol did. And I get it, right? A lot of these people grew up in their most memorable times at Bristol or watching Bristol came in those years, right? And that's fine. Like, totally appreciate your memories and whatnot. But when you look at it from a, you know, just a racing standpoint, top to bottom, New Bristol is still better than what Old Bristol was. Old Bristol very rarely ever broke a thousand green flag passes over the course of 500 laps, which is kind of wild when you think about it. Meanwhile, New Bristol, if we just want to keep calling it that, continually blows past 15, 1800 passes on a, uh, a green flag passes in a race. What we saw on Saturday night this year in 2023, there were over 1,800 green flag passes, but I, along with a lot of other people, don't really consider that race very good. I think I gave it like a 67. It's not, it wasn't a good race. It was an okay race. It was mid. It was 
okay. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. It's not the best thing I've ever seen. It was just there. Meanwhile, if social media existed back when old Bristol existed, everybody would be complaining about how hard it is to pass, that everybody's just running on the bottom, that everybody just has to run into one another. It would just be this whole onslaught of people complaining. Like we see with New Bristol where they're like, oh, it's so hard to pass. It's really not, it's not the track that makes it hard to pass. It's the fact that this car continues to run too much downforce and has a very wide tire and it just makes passing harder. You shouldn't have an aero issue at a short track, but here we are in another year and another time we're talking about this because NASCAR refuses to actually fix the problem, which is the car. Instead of fixing the car, they continue to just want to put PJ1 traction compound in the bottom lane. That works to an extent, but it doesn't actually fix the problem. Same thing with bringing back stage cautions. It doesn't fix the actual problem. It just slaps a Band-Aid on it, which NASCAR is really good at. They should team up with the Flex Seal guy because all he likes to do is just patch holes and cause damage for other people down the road. That's what NASCAR essentially does. Slap a Band-Aid on it. Let future us worry about that uh, 10 years from now. And that's what they continue to do. But when we get back to the topic of Bristol, new Bristol is better than old Bristol. And I get a ton of people in the comments, especially on TikTok when I posted this same video of them being like, old Bristol is better. Old Bristol, old Bristol, old Bristol, old Bristol. And that's fine. You can have your opinion. But when you want to talk about actual racing, new Bristol is better. I get it. Right, Old Bristol was that hard-nosed short track racer. Sometimes you just got to get up there and root somebody out of the way. I get it. That's that's some people's favorite form of racing, right? Short track racing is really enjoyable. But there is something pretty cool about having multiple lanes to run on, and you have a guy that can dive the bottom, roll the center, and then you have a guy that enters on the top, carries his momentum off, and they're just constantly in this jockeying back and forth. Everybody talks about wanting to have good battles for the lead. That's what we get more often than not with New Bristol, outside of the car that we currently have. And yet people are like, I want Old Bristol back where you just ran through a guy and then immediately took the lead. Meanwhile, like you can have a really good 20 lap battle for the lead and people are like, this sucks. I don't know what I don't know what people want, right? I think Bristol puts on a fantastic show. Next year, they're going back to two concrete races. I think one of the biggest issues with this car, other than the really wide tire and the high downforce, is, well, both of those things, if we're being completely honest. And there's a simple fix to that. NASCAR can just run the short track package, which they run at Martinsville, uh, Richmond, and other places. They can just do that here. But because this Bristol and Dover aren't considered wet weather package tracks, they have to run the Speedway package, even though it's a half mile short track. It's really, really dumb, and it's peak NASCAR when you think about it. But at the end of the day, New Bristol is better. And until somebody can make a compelling argument as to why Old Bristol would be better, right now, if you put the car that we currently have onto Old Bristol, where it was a single lane on the bottom, all you would see would be a straight 36 car parade around Bristol Motor Speedway. Because even getting to the bumper of a car right now is pretty difficult. Then if you do actually lay the bumper to them, you have a lot of downforce and you have a pretty big contact patch, you're going to have to hit them really hard to move them up out of the way. And you're not going to get the same bump and run that you previously had with the Gen 4 or, well, basically just the Gen 4 uh, cup car. The COT did run one race at Old Bristol, but whatever. We don't need to talk about that. The problem is you wouldn't have any better racing with old Bristol than you currently do with new Bristol with this current car. It would just be a single file line and everybody would immediately take to social and be like, this race stinks, which it would. And I would have no problem with people saying that. But currently with the car and with any version of any generation of a cup car, new Bristol is going to race better. And I get it. We can romanticize Old Bristol, the same way fans love to romanticize racing in the 80s or EA Sports NASCAR games. Um, we all have fond memories. Fact of the matter is, maybe it wasn't that great. We just remember it because it was a good time in our life. And uh, I think that's what happens with, with Old Bristol a lot. As fans just think of specifically Dale Earnhardt, and they're like, that's when NASCAR was great. So... Either way, let me know in the comments, Old Bristol or New Bristol, and why. I'm not looking for uh, for your capstone um, research project here, but just, you know, 
some information because I personally like New Bristol and I have for a long time because I think the last decade of races there have been absolute bangers for the most part. So either way, let me know, like and subscribe to the channel, follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.